Many people, including those who attend religious temples and call themselves Christians, have doubts about the existence of demons among us. For many, Satan and his demons are mystical figures created by popular imagination only to generate fear and prevent people from engaging in certain behaviors that are not approved by God. But that's not what the Bible says. According to the scriptures, the devil is more real than we imagine, and this is guaranteed to us by Peter, one of Jesus' closest disciples who witnessed firsthand what Satan can do with people's lives here on earth. Let's read what he wrote. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Yes, Satan and his demons exist and are closer than we can imagine. But this subject is not frequently addressed among Christians. Perhaps because they are frightening, some people avoid the subject, but the truth is that the Bible has much to say about these creatures and the power they have over people. And to understand about the power of demons, we must first know them. Many people believe that a demon is Satan himself, but that's not true. A demon is a fallen angel like Satan. They are spiritual entities created by God, but they rebelled and became part of Satan's army. Let's see what Jude wrote. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling. These he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In this passage, Jude is referring to the angels who rebelled against God, that is, the demons. They are accused of having abandoned the purpose for which they were created, and about a third of them were expelled from heaven alongside Satan, who did this because he wanted to have more authority than God himself. And now that we know who the demons are, let's discover their powers according to some passages from the Bible. But before we begin, I want to ask you to already leave your like, subscribe to my channel, and activate the bell. Because that way you will receive YouTube notifications on your phone every time I post a new video. Demons can enter animals and humans. More than causing fear, generating problems, and putting traps in our paths to bring us down and distance us from the presence of God. Demons can also possess the bodies of living beings. In Mark chapter 5, there is a very clear passage about this. The Bible says that after casting out a legion of demons from a man, Jesus allowed these beings to enter a herd of pigs, which was on a hill near that place. Let's see what is written. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about two thousand in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. In this verse, you can see that by God's permission, demons can also enter animals, in addition to being able to control them. And besides, demons enter people's bodies. Let's see what the Gospel of Luke reports about the situation of Mary Magdalene, who was possessed by seven demons. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Just as happened in these two situations, the enemy continues to have this power, so we cannot underestimate him. Rather, we must cling to the Lord, because nothing happens without his permission. Second, demons can cause mental illnesses. Few people know this. But demons can cause, among many other bad things, mental illnesses in people. And one of the most well-known examples of this evil power is also told in Mark chapter 5, in the story of the man in the country of the Gadarenes. Let's see what is written. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. 
for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. This shows that demons can make us act totally differently and strangely from what we are used to. And the book of Matthew also shows us another example of this. Let's see. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at that moment. But pay close attention to what I'm going to say now. Just because Satan and his demons can cause mental illnesses in people, doesn't mean that every person with some kind of psychological disorder is possessed by a demon. That has nothing to do with it. These people are loved by God and protected by Him. Unfortunately, some interpret these Bible passages wrongly and end up judging the disabled very unfairly. Please don't do that, okay? Third, demons can cause physical illnesses. Just like psychological illnesses, demons can also cause physical illnesses in human beings. This includes leaving them mute, blind, deaf, among others. Let's see what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4. While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. Now let's see what is written in Matthew chapter 12. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. And the Bible also tells of a woman who suffered from a physical deformity caused by an evil spirit. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. And immediately after that, Luke emphasized that the woman was suffering because of Satan. Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for eighteen long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? You can see how demons have the power to humiliate us, causing us psychological and physical pain. But just like in the case of mentally disabled people, we cannot say that every physical disability is the work of the enemy. Remember that. Fourth, demons can deceive nations. This is a power that not everyone knows about, but it is much more common than we can imagine. That's why in Revelation chapter 16, the Apostle John made the following report. And I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are demonic spirits that perform signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Entire nations can be destroyed by the work of demons, and how does this happen? Through corruption, social inequality, hunger, greed, and all the other bad things that the enemy plants in the hearts of the rulers of these countries. It is important for us to know that demons will always work together to achieve their greatest objectives. That's why it's so important that we pray for our country and give it into God's hands. That's why the Word tells us, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. Fifth, demons can control unbelievers. Many people who have not truly given their lives to Jesus do not care about the existence of demons simply because they do not believe there is a spiritual world that influences our existence here on earth. However, 
The Bible gives us the example of unbelievers who were harmed and even used by demons. See what is written in Acts chapter 19. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, In the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Siva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. We need to understand that every human being is good in his essence because he was created in the image and likeness of God. But as a person allows sin to enter his heart, he moves away from God and becomes vulnerable to the enemy's actions. The devil uses people who do not seek the Lord and who hold bad feelings in their hearts. Anger, hate, rebellion, envy, lies, addictions, among other sins. And we may not believe it, but Satan and his demons are behind all this. That's why we need to pray for these people and cry out for the blood of Jesus to protect us from all who are under the action of demons. I know it's scary to think that evil has so much power, but as Christians, we don't need to worry. Christ has all power in heaven and on earth, and he can command demons to stay away from us in an instant. That's why it's so important to follow the teachings of Christ, believe in his word, and be faithful in everything so that we can overcome the spiritual forces of evil that try to attack us. We must always be alert to Satan's schemes and never underestimate his power, but always remember that he is not almighty. That power belongs only to God, and since Jesus came into the world, the devil did everything he could to defeat him, to overcome him, and to stop him from doing God's will. But his plan was frustrated when Christ died for our sins and rose again. So, if we stand firm with Christ, we will be more than conquerors. Amen? If you like this message, share it with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel. God bless you. See you in the next video.